Um, Munchun, um, okay, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, this Saturday. Okay. What's happening? This Saturday, we are moving into uh, one of the very first, uh, among the first pillar is the identity in Christ. We have covered moral authority. Now we are covering the importance of who we are in Christ. And uh, the reason why I approach you, uh, Reverend Durant, is because uh, the teaching in the Women's Father, we all know that we are sons and daughters of God. That is the sharing of secondary and primary identity. But I think we need to go deeper. What does it mean to be a son of God? What's so significant about being a son of God? And I've gone through three times with you about the importance of knowing our innate gift, our innate gift in relation of modality. And so probably it's good you will be able to share how modality relates to our identity in Christ. So that's where you come in very significantly. I think since our last uh, time that we were doing the seminars with you, that was pre-COVID actually. Um, so we have had a, uh, quite a bit of development uh, and I'd like to share some of that with your uh, members and um, with the fathers. And, um, but before I do that, um, can I know, uh, again, um, in chapter seven on your identity, um, you mentioned some things about the coat of arms. That's right. Um, can, can you uh, elaborate a little bit more so that I can get a sense of where, where you're coming from? Okay, yeah, the coat of arms is very significant because we are covering about values, family values. And a lot of fathers are not clear uh, what are the values that they should be embracing as they go about uh, leading the family. So there are a lot of confusion. So very often it is a mix up values of the world values, the Vamalidin system values. What should be the values that fathers should be upholding, walking, living? with the family. Uh, so that is basically where the coat of arms comes in. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let me just share a little bit of my testimony uh, here. The last uh, 18 months or so during the COVID, our church is actually closed. And so um, the Lord, however, brought uh, a group of fathers, Elijah fathers, actually, uh, from the E7K uh, um, Rainmakers, and they came, uh, used our place, and uh, it's been a, a, about a year, over a year now. They came last August, and it was a, um, it was an eye-opening um, um, experience because all of you, yourself included, um, modeled for me what a prayer altar is. What what does it mean to have a table of support and um, uh, men and fathers of the land who know who they are in Christ, their identity in Christ. Um, they, you modeled for me um, in a way that a book could never quite cut it because I've read many books about prayer altars, but this was something very special. Uh, it was very clear and stood out in my mind. And among them, of course, one of those uh, that is an, a mutual friend now, a prayer partner, is uh, Brother Chan V. So Chan V um, also had been doing research for the past three years, roughly parallel to the time that uh, my wife and I had been researching modalities. And, you know, it took about this time for me to actually get to know him well enough where we get a chance to sit down together, we're surprised that our research on, uh, you know, sort of comes together in terms of identity. And one of the areas that he, um, you know, I would like to introduce him also and his material on the force for life. Um, and I put it encapsulated a little bit in your coat of arms. Because as I was going through chapter seven, I realized that uh, even I was struggling to come out with my own heraldic uh, symbols. And I, I thought, well, if I'm in Christ, why don't I just use 
the uh, Christological understanding of identity. That means uh, biblical identity. So let me share with you now, and perhaps I can get your response. Um, I put uh, in the tagline there, Elijah Father, because I observed this modeling of this prayer altar, um, and, um, you know, part of the National Fathering Movement, uh, and uh, this family prayer altar where it was, uh, um, it was, um, it was, um, Focus around the Malachi mandate, uh, you know, uh, in Malachi four, five, and six, where it's you know it, it talks about behold I send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. And so, um, the idea here that the Elijah fathers of the land um, are actually mentoring the nation. And, of course, that includes the communities, the respective uh, uh, Christian communities or marketplace communities where we're making impact, but also in the family uh, to our own children, whether they be sons or daughters or grandchildren. And so the idea here is that the young lions or the, 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 the next generation, the Elishas, the Elisha sons or the Elisha daughters could actually hear the roar of the Elijah fathers. And when Chan V shared with me his uh, conception of the uh, lion and the eagle, the ox and the man, um, I, it, it, it really struck uh, home to me that uh, the Identity, uh, our identity, each of us, uh, is actually in uh, the Christological definition of manhood uh, as being, or personhood as being in Christ. And we can see multi dimensions of Christ, um, not only the, the prophet like eagle, um, uh, represented by the eagle, the eagle eye. Um, you know, that, that flies above adversity and is able to spot its prey from a distance, or indeed the uh, authoritative roar of the lion um, and uh, the, uh, that, that, that is sort of like the king of the jungle, you know, dominance, that sort of thing, when dominance is needed. And, of course, the ox, very, the very... Um, 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 uh, fastidious uh, um, uh, and conscientiousness of an animal that treads out the grain. And then, of course, when we come to the man, uh, uh, the, um, not just any man, but this is the man of sorrows. This is really the Lamb of God. This is the one who lays down his life, the Messiah. So, so in this, I'm, and I'm sure Brother Chanvi can, can explain this better than I can, but I see this fourfold um, uh, um, force of life, really, um, uh, as being part of the heraldic legacy that we have in Christ. In a, uh, I put there Elijah Father because of the modeling that has been around me. And I'm, I just was wondering, what is your reaction when you see something like this okay it's, it's definitely uh, different slightly different but I can see the significance of the coat of arms uh, in terms of what a father should be holding up in his life when you talk about the lion the ox the eagle and the man uh, so I think it's it's a new but it is definitely of significance that uh, the, the, the father, as you put forth, the slight Elijah father, should be upholding uh, such characteristics, such values, living it out in their family. I would agree in that as a new, uh, fresh perspective about what the code of arms is all about. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it'll take some time for. for all of us to, to actually think about the ramifications uh, of uh, adopting uh, 
a more Christological approach to the coat of arms, but I think it is a possibility, and and perhaps your your facilitators and yourself can can uh, um, put that down as a prayer item as well. How to move forward in this area? Um, again, I I didn't put the world needs a father T W N A F at the as there. I actually chose Elijah Father because I I was being a little bit more deliberate in the sense that that's kind of the vision that I see for Singaporean men uh, to rise up as Elijah's in the sense of those who have to pass the baton on to the Elisha's, the next generation. So that was really the, the, the reason that I, I, I didn't put the, the brand, the, the branding was, was, was omitted there. But certainly for chapter seven, I, I did see a very strong emphasis from Cassie's uh, ch- uh, work there, uh, research there on the importance of having a coat of arms. Um, yeah. D- did you want to say anything else about the concept of a coat of arms? Uh, I think it's um, when you share, it's 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 a, an a con- understanding of the father knowing what does the the lion represent in, in his life, the ox, the eagle, and a man. Uh, the very moment the father can clearly identify this role of Christ in their life, it will help them to come up with the right values that they need to walk in in the family life and with their family. Yeah, it's a personal well, understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ch- Changi has actually researched this three, four years, so it's mm-hmm. going to be like drinking from a fire hydrant. Mm, uh, right. on Saturday <laughs> yeah. because he's got so much it, apparently this sequence of fours is everywhere from Genesis when you talk about father, priest, king you know, prophet you know, or you know, all the way to Micah 6, 8 and so many other places where you see leadership the genius uh, of leadership um, Christian leadership I mean what sets us apart as Christian men or Christian fathers than let's say Buddhist fathers or uh, Islamists, uh, they want to be more like Muhammad, for example, or Buddhists, they want to be more like Buddha. But for us, we want to be more like Christ, isn't it? And that's really the distinctiveness um, of our co- coat of arms, if indeed we are in Christ Jesus. Perhaps this is not applicable to um, men who are in a secular face, a more secular facing uh, situation. But still, you you do have other um, you know elements of force, uh, even in DISC. Mayors, Briggs, and so on and so forth. So there does to be seem to be this a uh, quadra quadra quadraphonic uh, or quadraphonic uh, sort of uh, aspect. So we'll we'll leave it to Chambi to elaborate a little bit more. Um, the the other thing that struck my eye when I was going through chapter seven was the concept of the table of support. Um, I have also an, a graphic that um, perhaps uh, we can pray into this. Uh, this graphic as well um, concerning this identity, this this uh, identity as a Chris, Christian father or an Elijah father, and then in relation to his table of support. Can you tell the folks, uh, uh, just refresh our minds, what is the table of support and what is it meant to, to achieve? The, the table of support is uh, a new concept, a new culture, that a wound is the father would like the Elijah, I mean, would like the fathers to surround themselves with. And I think it's very significant to, to rally the right people into their life as a community to grow, to develop, to check one another. And uh, one of the most significant first chair, there are 10 chairs, one of the first chair that need to be filled up is for the fathers to look for a mentor, a mentor that will be around eight, ten years old, a different season in our life to pour, to disciple, to develop him to become a more godly father. Likewise, he will then look and pray for a mentee that he will develop. And there are other chairs like the coach, you find the coachy, you find your inner circle of friends. This will help to ensure and see that the father is kept walking diligently in the straight and narrow way of a godly righteous life. 
So that is a whole idea of a table of support that the Father will not stray away, but will keep on living the godly life that they are called upon to live. Yeah, so that basically is what a table of support is meant for. Yeah. Well, well, as I say in my in in my testimony of uh, the last eighteen months or so, um, when the Elijah fathers came, actually, when the E seven K brethren came to Geelong uh, uh, to continue the the national fathering movement and the family prayer altar, the idea of prayer altars um, became in some way a uh, table of accountability or, or or support for myself. So. If I can share, let me just share with uh, with you um, this uh, graphic that following on from the the idea of your uh, primary identity in Christ, um, that there would need there could be a multi dimensional aspect to uh, this table of. Um, of uh, fellow fathers or brothers, some of whom, as you say, would be possibly five, ten years older um, than than myself, and likewise, some could be five years, ten years younger than myself. But the idea here is that we are all uh, working, uh, praying together, and uh, it be a an altar uh, that. Uh, sort of uh, mirrors the heavenly altar, um, and 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 that you could see um, different aspects, different what I call modalities. Now, where where when I say modalities, let me let me share a little bit, Unchun, just to clarify where I got the word modalities from. Um, I don't mean in a psychological point of view where you just observe behavior. And that can change like a chameleon. No, I I I was uh, I was traveling with my wife uh, uh, outside of Sing- Singapore in Europe, and uh, on one of our walks in the city early morning, I saw my shadow. Uh, the sun was behind me, and I saw my my own shadow, a very long shadow. And the thought came to me that you know, if people were to get to know me, uh, they would learn very little about my shadow. Um, and as what Cassie says in chapter seven, there is a unified me, but that me often is I, I'm oblivious to myself, to 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 the me that is very special to God, but I it's very hard for me to know. So when uh, I saw that shadow, I realized the word dropped into my heart, modalities, and uh, it uh, it. Uh, it sort of expresses the seven um, different archetypes that we see in Scripture, especially, we see it all over Scripture. Just like Chan he sees the, the fours all over the Scripture. I see the sevens all over the Scripture, like the seven uh, churches, the seven keys, the seven spirits, the seven angels over the churches, and so on and so forth. Um, Seven mountains. We have uh, seven colors of the rainbow, and so on and so forth. So, this, uh, you know, this this idea that different people, different fathers have different gifts or uh, identity. Uh, uh, they have different flavors, if you like, uh, distinctive flavors. The way you impact the world is different. And I would like to take an example of yourself, um, uh, as you have been through my my full modalities course, and very happy to bring your facilitators through that, or anybody who's interested in the full course um, in modalities. But I would like to uh, just take a look at that second one, the blue one, number two, and ask you. Uh, Bunchun, um, Chairman Wee, what, how did you know that you're a diaconia? Those of you who, who received the, the cards, um, either in electronic form or actual fo- um, uh, paper form, uh, you can take a look at the blue color one, which says diaconia. These are 
Greek words that uh, I can show you the, the roots to. But let's let's just first talk a little bit and have a conversation about Chen and Wee. And how did you know that, how did you arrive, how did you know you're not the discoverer, you know, prophetic type, or, and how did you know you're not the, 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 the talker type, you know, the, the influencer type? How did you know you're not the organizing genius? How did you know that you're not the uh, rescuer, for example, the alias? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what, what, what brought you to the place where you could say, oh, okay, this is my elemental uh, archetype okay. that God has given that my that my my own DNA, my own default natural ability from the Father, given from the Father in the mother's womb. Okay, uh, it was quite a while. It took me uh, upon attending three times a session uh, in about. I I would recall three to six months later to be very convinced that I'm a diconic uh, in the area of service uh, because I just when initially I thought I was a teacher because I do a lot of training since my flying days so it was a bit challenged but then when I look deeper into the manner and the way I do things uh, I realize upon in the description given that I am a diconic. Uh, diconic is the, the concept of whenever I want to do or execute anything, uh, I like to do it well. Not just well, but very well. Almost to what you describe as shape to perfection. So I'm very particular about that area. So what drives me to, 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 to teach is to teach excellently well. And so it goes upon myself. Uh, even my wife would, would realize that I can be at the computer for, for I was just sharpening all my PowerPoints that everything is in place. And uh, so from that, I realized uh, I don't force myself to do it. And when I get myself to tidy up, I, I enjoy doing it. I can be on hours on, on yeah. just wanting to see. So I would then convince myself, yeah. When I do certain things, I like to do it perfectly well. Yeah, they, 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 call, they call that the 10,000 hour rule. And you get into your flow and you lose track of time. Time doesn't mean anything to you anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because there was once I was caught four hours just to tidy up and my, and my right leg got frozen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, th- this is really the challenge, I think, for the economy. Yeah, I'd like to comment on this. I think it's a, f- uh, a, a fresh approach about the table of support. In the World Needs of Father, we tend to want to include people of our kind, so-called our kind. But this is a, 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 a fresh awareness for the Father. When they include people in the 10 chairs of the table of support to be aware to include people of different innate abilities, which is very interesting that there are seven types that they can consciously include so that their own personal growth, sharpening, will be even quicker, faster, and more holistic. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, lots of lots of things to, to think about. Um, um, I think uh, also... The possibility that um, the possibility that uh, um, uh, you know that you can actually diagnose, you can actually you, you can actually self-diagnose. Um, but one of the fastest ways, of course, is to have your is to have your um, your wife to to actually uh, diagnose for you for your wife to see you. Was there any evidence uh, that your wife would see you as a diaconia? Well, if she's here, uh, she would definitely mention the part whereby I will continuously ensure that most of my tabletop is always kept clean. Uh, So I'm a a neatness freak, tidy freak, even from the balcony onwards, the way that 
the shoes and slippers are arranged, when it's out of our alignment, somehow it gets me a bit agitated. It used to be a cause of tension and conflict uh, between her and me. But now I said, well, I want to get it right in order. I just take it upon myself to do it. So, <laughs> yeah, for, for me, what did it and what confirmed it really was your testimony when you were telling me about the 38 years. I mean, uh, with SQ, I mean, there must be a reason why, mm. you, are, you know, the employer is wanting to retain you and, and simply because of your fastidi fastidiousness to detail, every last detail, mm. you know, when, when, when it comes to a superior uh, service, in-flight service, I mean, it is not, it's, you know, it is not, it is not a stationary vehicle. And mm -hmm. there are hundreds, thousands of people moving in and moving out. So to me, that was the clearest uh, example. Did, did you have any, did you have any other uh, examples from your career with SQ that, that really sort of confirms, you know, confirm chop your, your uh, architect? I think it really helps me in my performance. In, in my in my having to deliver the first class service, and I and I do it uh, in a way that is uh, I I enjoy doing it. I enjoy seeing things done well, in, in it's a way it should be done. Attention to detail, and it must be done attend in a very uh, sequential in detail. The only thing is that the 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 people working with me can be a bit stressed when they don't meet the expectation of details. So they have to be a lot of debrief given to them until I sharpen them. But it helps me. I don't find it tiring. I find, actually enjoy uh, seeing things done in perfection. Yeah. Well, of course, becoming coming into Christ, of course, makes a difference because we redeem the archetype. Mm -hmm. We redeem the modality in the sense that a perfectionism is tempered with excellence in Christ. So it's the motive is different. It's not to, you know, make a name for yourself now. Yeah. You're in fact very conscious that whatever you do, it is for the king. It's not for your own, you know, um, it's not to build your own empire or your own Babylon and, you know, those awards and all those accolades that they put on you, it, it really doesn't matter anymore. It's, it's all about serving the king in the most diligent way and giving glory yeah. to God. I think that is, a, that is one point of a, 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 a realization for me, because prior to that, it's, it's more like self-glory and doing it for myself. But now it's okay to, to do the best that I can for the glory of God. And I don't have to be uh, unhappy and people are not performing to expectation, but I just encourage them to flow along. Yeah, that helps a lot yeah, in your teaching. Well, yeah. one of the things perhaps I can suggest because of shortness of time, and I thank, th thank, thank you so much for, for your time as well as those that are helping in the recording. Um, one, of, one of the things I could suggest perhaps is for uh, your cohort um, of men um, you know, perhaps we can have um, a table of support, you know, uh, at uh, GBG or whatever. I can put on a meal, Shabbat meal or something. And then we gather in groups and then we could have more luxury of time outside of the seminar on Saturday where we could actually sit down like this and do the, you know, diagnostic over the table. And I'd, I'd, I'd be very glad to avail of myself of the, of the time. To, to do something like that. I don't know whether that might be useful for your teams. Yeah, I think we can uh, dialogue further on that because I think many times we, we tend to formalize training to discovery. I think modality is something that can be done in a very relaxed manner, in a conversational manner with you and folk. And uh, we, we just, just uh, uh, pinpoint or, or share what we feel about this other gift and yeah. to get further in, in a very informal manner, non threatening manner, like what, what you've just suggested. It could be a very good form of learning and discovering. Yeah. Sure, we're very, yeah. very welcome to use the house in, in Geelong. 
Um, it'd be like a breakout group, but instead of meeting on Zoom, it is actually in person. Yes. And yeah. just over a meal or makan or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Not too many, but and, and not not any performance or anything. It's just just t-shirt and jeans kind of thing, and then just gather with with some with some uh, makan kecil or something like that. Hmm? So through that interaction, I think it'll be much better than, uh, you know, because I do want to give uh, a little bit more time to Chan V on Saturday when he comes in. Sure. Okay, great. Um, so um, besides that, I think um, I think I only have um, a couple more slides. Maybe I do have a summary slide for you, um, the uh, which shows the seven. The sort of uh, in English, it gives you, of course, these uh, words here on the left hand column there, prophetia, diakonia, didasco, and so on and so forth. That's all in Greek because we did want to anchor and make sure that we are anchoring this courseware in the Bible. So I've actually taken up New Testament Greek and make sure that uh, by checking the interlinear, uh, we are getting all of our um, nomenclature correct. Um, you can see there, I've summarized it, the futurist executionist, which is the one that you were talking about, diakonia, essentialist, that's the teacher, conversationalist, that's the, um, that's the bridge builder sort of influencer guy, economist, that's the one that's the organizing, organizational genius, expansionist, that's the lead, lead capability, that's the one that has the four components of the lion, the ox, the eagle, and the man. And then interventionist, um, uh, which is the rescuer component of the Elias. So you can see there, um, these are all hats that we wear, but one of them will be our core, what we call elemental or primary, primary identity. That means how God has wired us. And all of this is uh, plainly... Um, Stated in Romans twelve six to seven and eight six seven and eight. Um, let me just um, let me just give you a little bit of history as to where these uh, modalities come from. Um, I don't know if we ha we still have a little bit of time. Yeah, maybe we've got about just five minutes left. Um, it, it, we can take a look at this one here. Um, where does it come from? You can see three major cities in the New Testament in the first century uh, that played this role. Um, one of them was uh, Ephesus. Uh, that's in purple there. Uh, that one was, that's the gift of the sun. And you can see that the gift of the sun uh, in purple under the, the revelation uh, at Ephesus of the um, uh, fourfold or five, some, some say fivefold. Uh, actually, pastor and teacher can be together. So it's uh, the fourfold um, apostle, prophet, evangelist, uh, shepherd, teacher as one. So that's those are the gifts of the Son. And then, of course, we're quite familiar with the gifts of the Spirit, the ninefold gifts of the Spirit um, for the church, establishing of the church. So um, at Ephesus, it was revealed the gift of the Son for establishing the kingdom. And then at Corinth, uh, the gift of the Spirit for establishing the church, the local churches, kingdom communities, or prayer altars, and then the gift of the Father in blue with a red arrow there. That's really where we're getting it, um, AD 58 in Rome, where Apostle Paul was uh, uh, um, spent his last days, uh, or some say, and um, um, it was revealed to him that the Father has gifts as well. These are not given. Um, during uh, conversion or after your your uh, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit, these are given from your mother's womb. So they're innate, natal. That means they're uh, part of your genetic uh, history, and um, not that they're passed down from father to son, but rather uh, they're passed down from heavenly Father to individual uh, sons. So when you're talking about coming into the manifestation or the revelation of the sons of God, this is really where we're talking about the inheritance that uh, we're given uh, one of these seven um, elemental uh, uh, person uh, 
personal identities uh, whereby we can impact the world. And uh, so we have a saying in modalities that every soul is ordained for greatness and every um, community can bless God. And flourish. So when you have your table of support, that's where, where that flourishing comes. And the last um, slide I have for today anyway is just to show you the uh, biblical basis of the seven birthright gifts. There they are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, in English, uh, prophecy, service, uh, teaching, exhortation, giving, leading, and mercy. So um, it's grounded in scripture, and um, uh, we have taken, you know, the liberty to just sort of reduce that down to very simple words. Um, the seven, uh, the first one is discover. The second one is serve. Uh, serve with excellence, of course. Teach, and then enable. Give, lead, and rescue. And there's some explanation for the full course. You'll be able to actually uh, do that, or, or indeed, if we can get together for for different uh, forms, some di tables of support, we we'll just sit down and then uh, try to understand these things, and discern, and diagnose our, ourselves. So um, that's about it. That's all I have. Uh, thanks, thanks so much, uh, Chairman B, for the time and. Um, I'd like to ask you if you could uh, maybe pray into the coat of arms now, and then also the um, table of support, as 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 I see. It. Father, we thank you for this wonderful privilege to serve you, and even as uh, Reverend Duran and Chang Yi share this coming Saturday, may you, through your Spirit, lead all the fathers to discover their true identity in Christ, and to be so excited and empowered to discover their innate elemental gift. And through Christ, he used this to impact people around them for Christ, for kingdom purpose. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thanks. Okay, Shalom. Thank you so shalom. much. And, and thank you, Joshua, for the recording. Thank God you. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, all.